This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo, what up, though, people? Like to welcome you back to the Keep It a C No podcast. As always, I am your boy Brown. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. If this your first time tuning in, salute to you. Please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button. Everybody that's tuned in, please hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, you disagree with something, you want to correct me on something, or if you just want to call me an Uber, let me know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note. And please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. Funniest thing I've seen so far this week, the Boston Celtics and Jalen Brown have agreed on a Supermax contract extension over 300 mil for five years. Shout out Jalen Brown, richest contract in NBA history. And I know I'm on record saying he isn't a super max player, but that man just got that bag, and I would never be mad at that, so salute to Jalen Brown. You know that's my cousin, right? As for Boston, you just gave over $300 million to your second best player on the team. Jalen Brown has the richest contract in NBA history, and he's the second best player on his team. The best player, Jason Tatum, he'll be up for a Supermax next year. So I'm kind of confused with that, but you add that in with the fact that, again, Jalen Brown Cannot go left to save his life. One hand bandit. I don't think giving him over 300 mil is going to put him in the gym more. So you just gave him that money and you got what you got. A one hand bandit. Lastly, Boston Celtics fans, I don't think they really care too much for Jalen Brown. So this is an interesting signing. Let's see after he plays this mandatory one year out on that contract. Will he be up out of Boston, whether demanding the trade or them wanting to get rid of him? Um, Shout out Cousin Reek on social media. I seen that he was saying Giannis is up for a Supermax next offseason. And that he believes Giannis will be the first player in NBA history to get at least four hundred million. What's your thoughts on it, though, people? If Jalen Brown just got over three hundred million, do you think Giannis will get four hundred million next off season? Or nobody's gonna crack the four hundred um mark yet. Keep it a C note. Let me know. I'm not saying Giannis is worth $400 million because I don't believe he's worth $400 million like I don't believe Jalen Brown's worth $400 million. But if we're going off the theory that everybody goes off of nowadays, oh, he got this, so I should get this. If Jalen got over three hundred, yes, Giannis should get over four hundred. May be the first player to crack that mark. Um, Still no word on the Dame Lillard trade. We already know Portland GM said this may take some months. But I seen something interesting um, on the internet, on YouTube. Something from, I believe, Dan Lebetard or something. Talk, somebody talking about what he said. And basically, Dan Lebetard said, Dame Lillard to Miami is a done deal. He said, when you hear these networks pushing theories, well, Portland could trade him here, they could trade him there. It's just for ratings. It's basically clickbait. There's nothing going on really in sports right now. I mean, we do have baseball, but basketball's on all season. Football hasn't started yet. 
So there's nothing really these networks can do. So they just push propaganda. Do you believe that? Do you believe Dame Lillard to Miami is already a done deal? And these networks are just trying to stretch it out for ratings? Yes, no, keep it a C note. Recently, Austin Rivers, son of uh, Glenn Rivers, I told you he can't be called Doc no more, especially after he blew so many leads in Philly as a coach. But Glenn Rivers' son, Austin Rivers, was recently speaking about the Dame Lillard situation, and he said that this started with Ben Simmons, James Harden, and all these guys are doing this. It's bad for the league. He also says that it's a business, so NBA players should be more business-oriented. If you sat down with that team and signed that contract, you should honor that contract, not demanding trades or none of that. How y'all feel about that? Pause. Because I agree with that. If you sit down and you sign a contract, a year later, you shouldn't be demanding a trade. I'm just keeping it a C-note. And again, like I said, the NBA was trying to look out for these small markets, but it's backfired. My thing is the NBA has to step in and put some type of stipulation in. If you're going to sign these Supermax contracts, you need to play a certain amount of your, your years on that contract on that team. Same thing for a max contract. It shouldn't be no, you got to play that first full season and then you're eligible to be traded. No, you should have to play at least 70, 70%, 60% at least before you, if you request a trade. I'm just keeping it a C no, so I don't see nothing wrong with Austin Rivers what he's saying. Now, I know a lot of times we'd be like, oh, but Dane, he's rotting over there. He's wasting his talent. But just think of a guy like Jeremy Grant who just signed back. His whole intentions is I'm signing five years to come back and play on the team with Dane. Now, Dane won out. So I think us as fans, we look at it only as the star's point of view, but we don't look about how the rest of the team may feel about it when them dudes went out them contracts. You might leave dudes stuck. I'm just keeping it a C note. Again, what's your thoughts on it? Do you think Austin Rivers is right? Do you blame Ben Simmons and James Harden for this demanding trade stuff? Yes, no, keep it a C note. Should NBA players honor their contracts once they sign them? Yes, no, keep it a C note. We just had a fight in Japan. I think it's Bantamweight. The little guys, pause. 122, we had Stephen Fulton over in Japan to take on Naoye in a way. And in a way, came away with the eighth round TKO. But this fight was bad on so many levels for the champ. First of all, cool boy Steph, the champion at 122, but he's only had three fights as the champion. His last fight, he didn't even look good. Pause. You're the champion. You're going to Japan to fight a guy who's like, I lead it. I'm over there. You don't know no English. You're uncomfortable with the flight and everything. The whole arena is against you. That was just bad. Now, I'm always on record saying Devin Haney shouldn't take Shakur Stevenson because Shakur Stevenson should work for that fight. And Oye jumped right up to 122. Became a mandatory. Right? Fulton could have ducked him. He gave him the shot. Not even ducked him. He could have made him earn it. He gave him the shot. He wasn't gaining nothing out of it. If Fulton beat Inouye, he wasn't getting a belt or nothing. I know pound for pound Inouye is on that list. Inouye is on that list. But Fulton doesn't gain anything but credit if he wins that fight. Inouye was the only one that benefited from that fight. Now Fulton's career may be over. He may never get a title shot again. So this is why I say when they say Dev, Duck, and No, you got to make these guys earn it because you had to earn it. 
And once it's gone, you might never get it back. I'm just keeping it a C note. But I want to ask you a question because both of these guys is 122. 122 pounds. They're grown men. How is it Noyway? 122 when he's 30. What kind of diet is that man on that he's 30 years old and he only weighs 122? Can somebody help me out with that? Keep it a C note. Let me know. We're getting closer and closer. Spence, Bud Crawford, this weekend. Let's keep it a C note. You had time to think on it. You had time to sit around all your homies that you call mushes and dudes that are just, they don't know what they're talking about, so you get a feel for what they're saying, pause, and can go the opposite way. Terrence Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, who you got? Keep it a C note, let me know. Hey, listen, man. I've been wanting to change the Earl Spence so bad because I've been looking at fights of both of them guys. But some of my homies that are major mushes are all going for Earl Spence. So I'm going to take Bud Crawford by default. I did like him just because at first. But I think Earl does get the win. But I'm not going to say Earl because of the mushes. I'm going Bud Crawford. Again, who you got? Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence. Keep it a C, no, let me know. I want to ask y'all a question. Can anybody keep it a C, no, let me know. How does the ranking system work in boxing? Ring Magazine, WBO, anybody, can y'all let me know how does the ranking system work in boxing? You take a guy like Devin Haney, undisputed champion. Lomachenko was the... Number one contender. He beats Lomachenko. Pause. Now, on most of them lists, Shakur is number one. Right? But Lomachenko dropped the number two. How don't he go to the back of the list? How does he still stay over top of other guys for a fight? Pause. Can somebody tell me how that works? How, when you're looking at all the rankings, IBF, WBA, WBO, how come Tank isn't on much of them rankings? Because I hear everybody saying that they do it by the names and whoever they think is the bigger draw. Nobody in boxing is a bigger draw than Tank. Tank is the cash cow, especially in that division. So can somebody explain to me how he's not ranked on every list? For every belt? How does that work? How does that work? So, Devin Haney goes up to 140, fights Regis like they're saying he's going to do. He wins against Regis. That sets up a fight with Teofimo Lopez to be undisputed at 140. Devin Haney, one fight at 140. Again, how are we doing these rankings? And then that would mean Shakur Stevenson and Lomachenko would fight for the, for for, the, for some of them belts or all. I don't know if it's all of them belts or just WBA and all of that. But how is this ranking system working? How does Shakur jump all of these guys that've been there? How does Lomachenko stay over top of these guys and he has three losses? Can somebody please help me out? Last thing I will say about bulk boxing is. I just smoked, spoke on Teofimo Lopez. That Cambosis fight was out of control. The judges ripped that brother off. Cambosis did not win that fight. Me watching that fight, I said, Teofimo Lopez, he must have been hurt real bad when he fought against Cambosis because Cambosis is horrible. He is trash. I'm just keeping it a C note. And he has a chance to be like a number two contender for IBF belt or something like that. Like the rankings is totally outrageous. Well, this is the episode where we've been talking about money. Jalen Brown got that money. Shout out to Justin Herbert. He just got paid contract extension five years, $262.5 million. Yikes. He got that bag on him. Um, 133 guaranteed. 
It could go up to 218 million fully guaranteed, and he got injury clauses and everything. Annually, he's now the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Keep it a seat. No, what's your thoughts on a Justin Herbert contract? I got to say, listen, again, I'm not hating on these guys getting their money because especially football players should be getting that money because the sport is lethal. But what has Justin Herbert done in the NFL to deserve 50-something million a year? How many playoff wins does Justin Herbert have? How many times has Justin Herbert played in a championship game? I mean, what are we, what, what's going on here? And shout out to Austin Eckler because Austin Eckler is running around and they're doing group chats and they're talking to the, about how the NFL don't value running backs. And it, Austin Eckler, you're on a tag and you did not get a contract offer because Justin Herbert was going to get five-year contract, $262.5 million. So when you're saying they don't value quarterbacks, are you saying where's the money? The money went to Herbert. That's where it went at. That's where it's going at. I'm just keeping it a C note. Again, to me, he's not worth that money, but salute to Justin Herbert for getting the money. Odell Beckham Jr. is saying that this will be his last season and he's going to give it everything he has. How y'all feel about that? What y'all think Odell going to do this year? What's your projection for Odell? Will he have, will he be in between the 100 to 400 range, 400 to 700 range, or will he be seven to a stack? Last option is, will he be over a stack? Keep it a C note. Odell Beckham Jr., he's saying this is last season. What's he going to do this year? Let me know. We're talking football. I've been doing these rankings. It's time to hit the defensive side. I'm going to start with the safeties. I'm going to give you all my top 10, but I'm doing 10 through 6, and then I'll give you on the next episode 5 through 1. So at 10, I'm going Antoine Winfield Jr. out of Tampa Bay. Fell off a little last year, but he gets busy. At 9, I'm going Buda Baker, Cardinals. At 8, R and me if I say the first name wrong. Talanoa Ufunga. Straight out of San Fran. That boy get busy. I wanted to move him up on my list, but it's just his first season really doing that. He was all pro this year. He definitely got busy on my list at eight, but don't be surprised if he moves up before the year is over. Number seven. I'm going to Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, or Mathieu. You pick how you want to say his last name. And at six, I'm going Jesse Bates. He's now in Atlanta. So again, at 10, I got Antoine Winfield Jr. Nine, I got Buda Baker. At eight, I got Talanoa Ufunga. At seven, I got Tyron Matthew. And at six, I got Jesse Bates. That's 10 through six safeties. I'll give you five through one on the next episode. Before I get out of here, just an update. They saying the guy, Keefe D, that runs his mouth a little too much is whose house they ran in in Vegas. Well, his wife's house. They took stuff out of there. And it's all about this Tupac murder. But I seen something interesting, and it may have been from Choke No Joke. But I've seen something interesting that made me say, hmm, that could be true. They're saying that this is all a ploy now. Or Choke No Joke is saying that 
they may be trying to get Diddy out the way. He just went through something with them folks that own Ciroc. He called them racist. He tried to go against them. Now he believes that they may be trying to get Diddy out the way. And I, I listen, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Because when you're in, you're in. And that's just it. That's just like if you got a powerful lawyer, you're going to win most of your cases. When you don't got that lawyer, then you got a problem. When you got money backing you, you rent. You go against that money, then you got to fend for yourself. You see what's happening with Kanye West. I'm just keeping it a C note. What's your thoughts on it, though, people? Do you think there's any chance that this Tupac investigation being reopened has anything to do with trying to get Diddy out the way? Yes, no, keep it a C note. Before I wrap this episode up, I want to send condolences to Gilly, who lost the son. Um, Gilly from Major Figures out of Philly, also million dollars worth of game. Keep it a C note podcast, sends our condolences. Also, hey, listen, man, shout out to Nas, man. Listen, I, I, only I don't know about the Boston runs back in the 60s and none of that. The only thing I've seen is a Jordan run. And then I've seen Tim Duncan have a, a crazy run. But this boy, these boys, Nas and Hit Boy, man, the run they're on is amazing. Five albums in a row, all good music. Shout out to Nas, shout out to Hit Boy, shout out to haters that's still trying to bring the other guy up. Come on, man. It's only one goat, Escobar. On that note, I'm going to wrap this episode up. Again, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, salute to you. Please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button. Everybody that's tuned in, please make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, you disagree with something, you want to correct me on something, or if you just want to call me an Uber, let me know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note. And please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. As always, I am your boy Brown. Please tell a friend to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell everybody. Keep it a C note. I holla at y'all. This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da.